skimming the top. This was a stock. What's this called? Yes, exactly. Love that. Okay, and, and you wait. You know, you waste a little bit, but you try to minimize that. Leave it on there for a good long while. At first, it's really foamy and white. But if you leave it on there for two, if you leave it on there for a little while, after it's already melted, it'll kind of crust up on the top. It'll be easier to take off. If you start trying to skim it too early, there'll just be you'll be skimming it, and then stuff will still be floating up to the top. Is that skim useful? Yeah, absolutely. So what I would use this for, you know, a lot of people throw it away, but what I would use this for is it'll add flavor to something. You know, maybe you're making family meal for your restaurant, right? Most restaurants make family meal. Saute your vegetables. You saute your vegetables and then throw this in kind of towards the end. Add a little bit more flavor to it. Nothing wrong with that. As far as um, anything else, I don't really think so. It can, it can add a little bit of flavor. So that's about it. We want to get all that stuff off the top. Okay, so you guys, I like what you guys, when you guys know you need clarified butter, somebody come in in the beginning, put a pot on, keep an eye on it, make clarified butter for full class because it takes a little while. How long does it take? Depends on how much. Water. What we used to do in the restaurant is we would take a big stock pot, right? And then we would load it full of butter, maybe 40, 50 pounds full of, full of the butter, because that's how much we go through every two days. Uh, leave it on the stove, on the pile of light, and by the time we get back in the morning, it was melted. But for you guys, I mean, this will probably only take about, this will be about five minutes, 10 minutes. Low, low heat. We got to keep an eye on it. Don't just set your little egg timer and walk away, and then come back because it'll be burnt. No, do not stir it because we want that water to settle out of the bottom, right? So this is what I'm doing right now. I'm pouring it off. So that's water. Yeah, all that white stuff you see down there. I'm gonna gently pour it in there. Same thing. You can use that. You can use that stuff on the bottom. A little flavor for, the, for your vegetables. As long as it's not showing up as uh, not pleasant to the eye later on, be all right. So what we want is we want to get until just until that water starts to come up to the edge, and then you're going to have to take your ladle and get it the rest of the way. Just the fat, no water. It's kind of tough. Yes, we both can do the rest of it. But you're going to waste a little bit. That's just the way it is. Like, okay, but try to try to minimize your waste. So I have this right here. I have this nice warm butter is what we're going to use for our hollandaise sauce. So we take the top off because that burns. Okay, those butter solids, that's what burns in our pan. So by taking those off, we can heat it to a higher temperature without changing. The stuff in the bottom is liquid. If we put that and we try to saute with it, uh, it's going to splatter everywhere. It's going to splatter all over our face. All right? Now, here's what we do. Okay, we're going to start off with hollandaise. Uh, shin wong. Bay leaf, shallot, peppercorn. Vinegar, water, reduced by half. Okay. Now you need half an ounce for every egg yolk. So I have, so I start off with three ounces, reduce it by half, one and a half ounces. And I might be going a little fast for people that can't math again, but I have three egg yolks. Three times half, one and a half. This is a shallow. So yes, it matters. Uh, Shallot has a distinct flavor. It's, pretty, it's kind of sweet. It's got like it's kind of like a cross between garlic and butter. Okay. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to strain this liquid. Now I've re already reduced it by half. Okay. Very nice.
What's up? Nice and foamy. This is the trick to get a really nice light hollandaise. Start off whisking before you go to the stove. Okay? Towel. This water underneath is simmering. It's not boiling. I'm not touching. The water's not touching the bottom of the bowl. Now I'm cooking this about halfway. We're not cooking it all the way. We don't want scrambled eggs in here. What I'm looking for is I'm looking for the trail of the whisk inside the pan. And I'll show you what it looks like. I'll bring it over and show it around when it's done. But about 145 degrees. Okay? We want this to thicken up, and you'll see it thicken up. And what you're going to try to do is you're going to try to make sure that you get all of that off the edges and around the sides, because it'll start cooking around the edges first. Mm -hmm. And you'll have scrambled eggs in there, and you want to strain it. <coughs> I don't want to do that. Okay. See how you can start to see the trail of the whisk in there? It kind of sticks around for a little bit. It's not done yet. It's almost done. You want it to be thick. Okay, so I'm gonna put it back over here. And you want your bowl to fit just like this inside of your bain marie, all right? You don't want a giant bowl on a little pot because it's only gonna be heating the bottom. You wanna heat the whole thing. And I don't wanna see anybody, I always see this, I see people holding it over like this. This doesn't work, it needs to be in there. Okay? This looks almost like a custard, right? You can see how it thickened up? This is what you're looking for. And you take it right off that heat. Now, take my blue towel. Give me a blue towel. It's not there. Bring it out real good. This is a trick. You need to be able to do this by yourself. That's good. Okay, this is a little trick. Uh, because we're gonna have to add butter in there slowly, okay? Twist this around, make a little circle. Okay, the bowl goes right in the middle. <coughs> now we can start to add our butter. Okay, make this a little tighter. Just like that. All right, there it is. So it's nice and thick. We're gonna add hot butter. If you use, if, it, if, this, if you made this in the beginning, and it's been sitting around for a while and it's cooled down. Right? No good. It's not going to work. Can you put that back in the dish area? Oh. Another one Sorry. Okay. Now somebody tell me the ratio for hollandaise of butter to egg yolk. Even. Hmm? Two to three ounces of clarified butter per egg yolk. Okay? So you know that you guys are going to make three egg yolks. How many ounces of butter do I need? Six to nine. Very good. Okay. This is a two ounce ladle. So I'm going to start off with three of these and see how that works out, right? Okay. I'm going to start off with a couple of drops. Okay. And I'm going to stir. I'm going to do a couple more drops. So you want to I'm counting the ladles, right? So don't lose count of your ladles. It's going to tell you when it's ready to stop. A couple drops at a time until you can see that all that butter is mixing in there. If you dump it in there all at once, what's going to happen is what we call break. It's going to break, and the fat is going to separate out, and you'll never be able to get it back together again the way that it was. Too late, you see? Yes, <laughs> he was too quick. That was one, right? Nice and slow pouring. Go nice and slow with the uh, with the whisking. You don't have to beat it to death. Okay, 
Okay, so I got two ladles in there. See, the sauce consistency has changed a little bit. Right now, it looks like a sauce. Is that the color that you want? We want it lemon yellow. Lemon yellow is the color we're looking for. If it's really dark yellow or orange-like, uh, and you're using these kind of eggs, because all the eggs are different, uh, then you may have overcooked it, or you started off wrong in the beginning. How many servings is it going to make again? Four? <laughs> Hold on, let's see. Six ounces of butter, it's one cup, it's about a, two tablespoons per about eight servings, or a little bit more. Okay? So I got six in there, or I got six ounces in there at this point. Let's take a look at it. See how it's pouring like a ribbon from my, from the end of my, yeah. when I pick it up? We're looking at the viscosity, right? Yeah. It's a little bit thick for me, but we still have to add lemon juice. Okay, so at this point, just take a look at it. Take the temperature, it's a little cool too, right? It's cooled down a little bit. So what you can do is, and I don't, I don't highly recommend doing this a long time because if you heat it back up too much it'll break. Okay, so we just go for a couple seconds at a time. It's cooled down. We don't want this to go above about 120 because that's about the temperature where it's going to start to break again. So if we stir it around on the pot and it doesn't change the viscosity at all because the more fat you add the thicker it's going to get. So if you start to see it's getting too thick, go ahead and stop. We can add just a few drops of hot water to it out of our pan, right? It's nice clean water. A few drops of hot water, that's fine. But let's add our lemon juice first. So we season with lemon juice, cayenne pepper, salt, and black pepper, okay? So, give a little bit of lemon juice at first. Stir it around. And I don't like the consistency of it, so I'm gonna put a little bit of hot water in, in a minute. I'm gonna add a little bit of my, my white, uh, my salt over there. On that. You can use a little bit of white pepper, right? Now, cayenne pepper, just yeah, enough pepper. to tickle the back of your throat. That's all we're looking for. Okay, so just a little tiny bit. Okay, a little bit of salt. This is a hollandaise. Okay. If we added more butter to it, drops of water, just stir it around. Hot water has to be. Now you see it? It's thinned out a little bit. Right now it looks more like that sauce consistency. What we want it to do is to fall in a nice steady stream. Okay? It's a little bit thick. Okay. And then at the end, very Okay? You taste it. Don't ever feed me anything you haven't tasted first time. <laughs> okay, it's pretty tangy. Need some more salt. Need to add more pepper. When we season, we always season from a pie, right? It's good in that practice. That's just a taste right there. Mm -hmm. So, add a little bit more and I'm gonna taste it. Okay, and you gotta remember, this is gonna be, this is not gonna be something that you can just sit here and eat like pudding. Hmm. It's supposed to be strongly flavored because you're pouring it on top of something else, right? It's gotta be able to go for, you know, one ounce of it's gonna go for a whole chicken breast. Okay. So it's gonna be a little bit stronger in flavor. You're gonna notice right away you get a little bit of that acid. That's a good thing. How many servings? Acid. A little, a little more than eight. A little more than eight. Okay. Eight. Eight, eight. servings. <laughs> All right, it's good to go. Now. We want to keep the sauce. The sauce has to be kept warm. We can't keep it out here like this. We want to keep it warm so that it'll stay as nice viscosity. So what I do is I leave it up here on top, covered plastic wrap, because it'll also get a little crust on top too. If you leave it out, uh, two hours you have to start making a new batch. If you guys are gonna, you know, you're making this on the line, every two hours you got to make a new one. Okay, these don't last very long. You can't make it for today. Use it for tomorrow. If you have time today, practice. We don't have a lot of time. Next thing I'm gonna do real quick.